much. Uh, a very warm welcome to our China lunch this semester. I'm always excited about seeing our image film. Congratulations to Paul again. This is really, really nice. And maybe Liu Hanxin and, and Thomas, you, you saw the two of you in the film as one of our peer people programs um, example. Very nice. So welcome to the China lunch. So, and uh, warm welcome also to my and Max students, the participants of our course, uh, China Climate Change as an Opportunity. And this event is a part of the seminar in, in which we deal with the consequences and uh, also with opportunities of the current climate change. So welcome to everybody. And the China lunch, as I think most of you know already, is um, part of a series of lunches that are taking place for several semesters already. And the China lunches have several topics and the topics for this semester is climate and will be for the next coming upcoming semester, maybe the semester afterwards, because climate is such a huge, huge subject. And why is it called lunch? Because maybe you remember that in former times, two to three years ago, before the pandemic, we used to sit together in a room and uh, discuss and had a short presentation, which is Liu Hanxin giving to us today. And then we had a lunch and we ate together and further discussed the topic. This is not possible at the moment or starting again, but we decided to go on with this format in the hybrid or in online format. So we sent out, um, the, the, fa the, the favorite um, recipe, the favorite dish of our lecturer. And today I have learned, because Paul did all the organization before, Liu Hanxin said that the Chinese smashed cucumber salad is one of your favorites. And we sent out the recipe. I think my husband is very good in doing it. And um, I think you can give it a try. So um, I think what the, what Banix project is all about, you might know because I've, most of the faces and names are familiar. And um, to the Urbanix team, Tanja Becker, Dochermung, Paul Hoffman, Max Lentner, and Miss, I have to learn the name, Dao Zhiyu, our new student assistant, are um, uh, um, belonging, and myself. And um, I'm just coming from a DAAD talk, a conference, which is taking place in Berlin. In, um, and I, I, they have a live stream there, so you could follow the discussion. And it was about how should we cooperate with China? This is what the EU Commission, what everybody, the US and us individually as institutions are asking ourselves, how can we do the cooperation? How can we proceed with this all very dynamic region of China and where where are red lines, where can't we cooperate? And I think this format here is a very good example of how cooperation can look like. And in this discussion at, with the DAAD, somebody from the ministry said, we have to say very clearly what we will talk about, what in, in which fields we would like to cooperate and in which we won't. And I think climate and the environmental protection is a subject that, that is central to mankind. And so we have to discuss these topics with China and we even can learn from China. And that's why I'm very, very happy that Liu Hanxin is here today and giving us a presentation on resilient public spaces or places, spaces, maybe places as well. <laughs> and uh, Do Hemeng will introduce you a little bit more in a minute. And so I'm very happy that we are shaping our cooperation in this form with old friends, we know Liu Hanxin, he's not working as to my perception for any military university or things like that. So it's on a friendly basis from people to people exchange. And this is what, what is, is to be done nowadays. Yeah, Go on with the cooperation. Uh, so this is the credo and the mission I would like to bring forward in any cooperation, any meeting we are doing. So this is very clear for us. Um, all right, so having said that cooperation is central with Chinese University. Today we are learning from China about climate. I think very warm welcome to you, Liu Hanxin, and I'm handing over to, uh, to Hemeng to introduce you a little detail. 
Okay, thank you, Sikrun. And now to our speaker today, uh, Dr. Liu Hanxin is Associate Professor at Guilin University of Technology, graduated from Technical University of Berlin, TU Berlin, and Tongji University in Shanghai. He has studied in Germany for nearly seven years, jointly cultivated double master degree on urban design by Tongji University Shanghai and TU Berlin, and PhD in architecture from Tongji University and postdoctoral fellow at Suzhou University. Professor Dr. Liu Hansin has conducted long-term research on the cognition behavior interaction based on urban furniture in public environments. And at the present, he is mainly focusing on healing urban environments and garden city design. So dear Hansin, dear Dr. Liu, we are very glad to have you here today. Again, very happy to see you here online. Hopefully we can see you very soon uh, in person. And now we are very looking forward to your presentation about resilient public space in the context of climate change and challenge and the, the discussion afterwards. So thank you in advance and the stage is yours. Okay, thanks. And is everything okay? First, I will share my screen. Okay, I hope everything going fine. We have we have done a, a, a trying test before, so is yes. everything okay? Yes. Okay, so now. Everything is fine. Okay, so I'm very happy and also thanks first to, to Hermon, to Tanya, also to Abes and also to China Center for giving me this opportunity to, uh, to share this topic with uh, so many of our new and old China Lounge friends. And uh, so to that, now I will start um, the, the topic today, which is um, resilient public space. Yes, should be a public places as, as what Abba said before in the context of climate change and challenge. So today uh, the topic is, the time is quite limited. So actually the topic is just a brief uh, inspirational discussion about some of our observation, our research, and also our thinking about the, the future direction for the devel development of public space in China from a perspective of an architect or from an urban, urbanist. So before we go deep into the, the topic, I think it's very important to, to mention about uh, the developing model of public space in China in the, in the past time. In about like 40 years, and China has experienced the largest and fastest urbanization rate, as we, as we all can see uh, from, inter from, the, from, from globally. And the uh, urbanization rate has, has rise up from only 20% to almost 64% in the year 2020. And in this process, China has built a lot of new area and more important is like we can see there are calculated more than 600 Chinese city uh, in this process has at least construct, constructed one newly built or, reno, or renovated or renewed central square as a public uh, symbol uh, also to represent the development of public space uh, construction in China. So in this process, actually, the, the developing model, which I, uh, I described, can be identified into three very typical characteristics. And first, as we can see from the diagram below, uh, a quite blank in function support, but in very big scale. The second is about the pursuing for marvelous or magnificent pattern design in our public space, uh, especially to have a very good view from the sky, but not so easy from a pedestrian pedestrian level. And the third, of course, is the a perfect combination of commercial investment and uh, commercialization surrounding the public space, and in in chase of a massive production of space and also a booming of commercial activities. So actually, when we work through in, in the new developed 
uh, Chinese city area, especially in the in the center area, we can find almost every city have a central square. Usually, we call the people's square, the people's central square, something like that. And this case I show is a very representative because it it is a perfect combination of all the three characters I have mentioned above. So this case is in Shandong Jinan city, the Quanchen Square. Uh, actually, we can see the square is almost 1.2 kilometers long and half kilometers wide. And of course, we can see there there is huge exposure surface area on the on the on the on the surface, and also with very symmetrical uh, central axis and this very well recognized this um, a little bit baroque style pattern. And what is more important is actually this public square is also built as a very huge commercial area because all the all the underground area is designed as a biggest shopping center. So actually the square is a roof of architecture. So we can see from another perspective, which we can see easily let like uh, there were also many uh, smaller sunken, sunken square uh, to work as the connection between the underground commercial part with the surface uh, we call the, the square area. Of course, now uh, with uh, so many people inside, we can see the comparison uh, between the scales of the square with the surrounding with the surrounding buildings. And what is also important to, to, to see from the picture is that actually uh, there are really many people uh, bustling on the, on the top, but when we really watch carefully, if we can find some really resting area for the people to sit down, uh, it's quite difficult to find. As I can see, the only area some people are sitting in these pictures is a small shadow area below the very blue sculpture, the shadow area, and just in the right, in the right below corner of these pictures. So, um, so now we can see this developing model in the past 40 years has been very much dominated uh, in the development of Chinese uh, urban space construction, including the design. But with the new coming um, changing condition in our living environment, especially from the new climate change, and there are more and more pressure and problems uh, which this, kind, this type of model uh, have to deal with uh, for the future sustainability. So today I'm also I'm only going to show uh, a quite representative direction and also quite representative uh, aspect coming from the climate change, which I will put like first the decrease of comfort time, the second extreme weathers, and the third the epidemic crisis, of course, which is so well known uh, across the world. First, we take Shanghai as an example. Mm, here in the, in the left side above, we can see a diagram which shows the average temperature in, in the year of 2020 in Shanghai. So the green zoom is means the cold temperature and then the red zoom means the, the very hot temperature. So only the yellow part, uh, which means the comfortable time, the comfortable time zone switch from 18, about 18 uh, degree to 24 degree. So actually we all know that uh, for, the, for our leisure activities and also for our motivation to enjoy the outdoor space, uh, the temperature and then the well-being of this air condition is a very important factors which determine the motive of people to go out, to hang out. And also we have a look of uh, the data from, from Guilin. Compared to Shanghai, Guilin is a much smaller and much greener city. And as we all know, also a very famous uh, tourist city in China. But also in Guilin, the, when we really carefully calculate the, the data, also the situation is not so good as we used to imagine. So we can see the comfortable, the comfort time proportion in Guilin in the year 2020. Is only is also no more than twenty five percentage in the percentage, and what is more, uh, what is more crucial and important is that when we when we look at uh, when we look at the change 
of this comfortable time proportion uh, from longer than 10 years. This is the data we have from, from the year 2005 until the year 2020. And we can see in Shanghai, the percentage of comfortable time zoom has declined from more than 26% to 24%, which I showed just now in the year 2020. And also the same thing is happening in Guilin. So uh, we can see from the year 2005, and then there was a, besides a small jump in the year 2008, and then the average proportion of the time zone has dropped down also from 20% in the year 2005 to uh, almost to about 18% in the year 2020. So also when we look a little bit bigger in, in, the, in, in, the, in the China, China is a geometrical area, we can see both, both Shanghai and Guilin I have marked in the, in, the, in the map on the right side, we can see both Guilin and Shanghai are located in the, in the yellow area. Actually, this diagram uh, is uh, an architectural regulation for, for our experts who uh, are sorry for the question. Yes? Here's Sikron speaking. Yes. The the uh, quality of your tone is getting worse. Is it only with me? No, I also hear an echo somehow. Yeah, there's an echo. I don't know what happened. Did you change anything? Uh, I think uh, Paul has to uh, mute uh, everybody. Somebody is speaking. Is yeah, everybody is muted already. Everybody is muted already. And, and there's some interruption on my audience, on my, on my voice, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's gone. Maybe you Okay, so it's now it's now now better. No. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. It's now, it's better. now better. You know, it's, it's, it's not better. Now I will continue. No, it's not. It's not getting better. It's not. It's not getting better. No. Okay. But um, Paul, and um, you um, have. Two. Um, I'm echo. I'm. I hear. Oh. And Shin, maybe if you mute your own audio, because I think it's from your speakers to the microphone and that's causing the interference. Can you say something? Okay, okay. I, I just, I just, my, 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 I think, I think you go, you go, you go, you go. But I also hear when Sigrun speaks or when Tanya speaks. So it's not only come okay. from Han Xin's side. It's the technique. Okay, okay. So I think so I've been waiting for just, just few, few one minute, minutes, minutes. When the, when the satellite is lying. It's like a hack. <laughs> Oh, very strange. Should we no, it's dial in again? Or... So maybe, so maybe it's for me to go out and out again. That that will not take long. long. So who has a suggestion for Max? What should we do? I don't know. Let's let's wait for him and see. Maybe it improves. Ich dachte eigentlich, dass er das Audio über sein eigenes Mikro rückkoppelt und das macht die Störung. Aber mal gucken. Ja, aber hört die, mich ja, jetzt klar? Ja, ja, mich hört man auch klar. Ich, auch, okay. Er hat sich jetzt ausgewählt, richtig? Also Hanchen. Genau, er kommt jetzt wieder zurück okay. und dann schauen wir mal. Dann warten wir. Dann das Publikum kann sich schon mal eine Frage überlegen. <lacht> über die ersten zwei Slides. Genau. Das war komisch. Ja, erst ging es, ja. I'm back. I'm back, I'm back. Yeah, we can hear you. Great. 
Okay. Yeah, sounds better. Okay, so good. We don't see your slides. We see not yet. We see your screen. Don't worry. It's all. I'm I'm sharing. It's showing. I'm sharing now. Uh, we. Sh mm, no. We. Yeah. Yes. It, it's coming. It's coming. It. It's coming from far. So from Guilin. So we have to wait. Yes. The weather is not so good now. <laughs> 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 okay, everything is fine. Just uh, we we okay. Go on, please. So 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 just now, how long? I mean, this uh, disturbance happening. Uh, I I would Don't make worry, fast just, a little just bit. Continue. It's it's fine. We we missed one slide or so. Okay. So actually, okay, I will continue. Welcome back, everyone. And so actually, I just. Uh, just now I show the uh, the change of proportion of this comfort time zone in Shanghai and also it's happening in quite similar in Guilin in this in this 15 years in in Guilin. So also now we can see uh, both Shanghai and Guilin is located in a quite comfortable zone in China. So even in this comfort quite comfortable area in China, we can already see a very clear down dropping of this uh, of these comfortable uh, days, uh, especially for outdoor activity, which is dropping continually. So actually this kind of tendency uh, has caused a very obvious um, transition of our living style, which is the people uh, slowly more and more, but more and more making their activities indoor. And this also in terms increase also the energy consumption, especially in the big city in China. So here um, we also take Shanghai as an example. Yeah. Yes, when if there is any interruption, just give me a sign, and then uh, to make sure of this uh, presentation still going well, it's okay for me. So uh, no, don't hesitate to to give me a to give me a, a sign. Okay. So so now we also go back to Shanghai. Yeah? We all know like now this mega city in, in China are not only made of concrete but also thousands of these. Uh, highly energy energy consuming air, condition, air conditioned machines. And the diagram on the left is showing the energy consumption data just in one year from 2015 to 2016. So what needs to be mentioned is actually the blue line shows the uh, average energy consumption coming from the industrial area. But the orange and the green line shows the consumption coming from the commercial and household activities. So we can see the, the two gray lines, which has marked the summer peak and winter peak. So the peak number, the peak data of this energy consumption has already two, at least two times of the energy consumption uh, from the industrial part. And what is more important is almost all this energy consumption is directly connected to the people's indoor activity, wherever is commercial and is household like home office or home accommodation. So we can see these trends keep going on and with less and less comfort time. And then uh, with more and more time for the people to search for comfortableness indoor. And, and this will in turn increase also the pressure uh, for the energy producing also our uh, carbon emission and all this um, big environmental issue uh, related. So the second factors I will mention about uh, the climate change is the more frequent extreme weather condition in the Chinese city. And also uh, because I'm living in Shanghai and this is my personal experience and we have we have come we have came across more and more this uh, extreme weather report. Uh, for example, like typhoon and Heavy, heavy rainstorm or something and super hot or super cold uh, weather days. And from the left diagram, we can see the average annual precipitation, which means the rainfall volume in Shanghai from the year 2010 to 2020, there was a slowly uprising uh, from, from, the, from before. And what is more extreme is that we are not having more rainfall volume, but we are having more rainfall in shorter time. The diagram below, especially the red colon, shows the rainfall volume just in one month in Shanghai in the year 2020. 
because usually the July and August and August, sorry, uh, used to be the heavy rain uh, season in, in, in Shanghai. So actually the, the, ex, the experts calculate uh, the rainfall time during this period and make a comparison with the years before we can see compared to the year in 1961 or 1962. The rainfall volume in Shanghai just in one month has rise up almost 2.5 times. So from this point, it's easily for us to, to understand that in, we, are, we are going to, to face more and more these extreme days in, in our city. That also means uh, there will be a keep time cutting uh, for the people to go outdoors, especially for the daily and leisure activities in, in the outdoor and public space. And also we take a look uh, back to Guilin. Guilin is uh, actually um, a, a, very, a very special city and the people here uh, like uh, outdoor activities very much. And also in Guilin, we can see the public space is very much connected to, to the Lijiang, to the river, to the riverside. But this is also give uh, more vulnerabilities because uh, coming from this uh, climate change. As we can see from the diagram, even in the in the uh, from the data in, in Guilin, which has shown also from the year 2018 2020, there was a very dramatically uprising for the rainfall volume in, in in one year. Even though the the average raining days in Guilin didn't change that much, but still the situation is getting worse because Guilin is is a city already with many many raining 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 times in one year. So as we can see, uh, all this public space which connected to the to the to the riverside are very easy easily flooded, and this also bring uh, less and less opportunity for the people here to really enjoy the public space for their daily time. So uh, the the third factors I mentioned today, of course, this is already uh, international issues, the crisis from this epidemic, uh, the new virus crisis. And this is a picture which has been taken during the, the so-called uh, silent management time in, in Shanghai. And we can see the, the most um, bustling area, the bond in Shanghai, has been so blanket. And, um, and as I know myself, uh, in Shanghai, at least in this year, uh, the closing time for the bomb is already longer than two months. And as we all know, in in during this uh, epidemical crisis time in China, almost every big city uh, has experienced at least one time of such kind of uh, silent control or this kind of management that people cannot get access to outdoor space and the public space became um, defunctional. Um, and then maybe this will be became more often in the future and nobody is sure of that. But this is also a very important reason which has uh, worked on the declining and then this down cutting of this possibility to use public space. So this is the comparison between uh, before the, uh, the crisis of uh, the crisis and after. So, so as we, this is also a very, controversial pictures uh, on the internet uh, just few, one month before. So actually these pictures uh, is very connected also to the topic uh, of resilient public space today because when we when we try to um, think about the resilience of public space uh, and when we look back to the to the public space itself, we can easily understand that actually the the nature is much stronger than than we imagine. So wherever, what kind of weather condition or what kind of virus is that is there, the, the grass, the green still growing, the only vulnerable thing and is the people's connection uh, to make use of the, the public space for the, for the sustainable daily needs. So, so this is the, um, the most important issue when we think about to enhance the resilience of public, public space is not too much about how to enhance this physical condition and this uh, luxurious decoration or, or something like that. And the connection between people and space should be the first priority. So as we mentioned, as I mentioned above uh, the three factors for coming from the uh, coming from the climate change now, we can see there are, there are less and less comfortable days outdoor 
and there were more and more extreme weather days and also this unpredicted epidemical crisis. And all this come together has moved people extremely um, eager to stay healthy and stay safety and stay happy in, in the indoor space, wherever for this uh, commercial public activities we can see in this shopping mall or this more and more new coming home office style. And then also this uh, not so pleasant social isolation coming from this uh, uh, epidemical uh, control time. So, so now there comes a very prevailing culture uh, in, in at least as a, in my personal background in China, this is a Chinese word, uh, jai. So actually this was used to, to only mean the, the meaning of home and house. But now when you ask some, some people in China, like what's your, what's your hobby or what's your favorite uh, hobby uh, activity? Many people will answer you, I like uh, jai, I like homing. So actually the home uh, or homing became the, a kind of living style that, that people uh, tend to search for uh, safety and, and also something like uh, I referred before. But also there comes many unpredicted and uh, unexpected uh, consequences, uh, which I have pulled on the right side is social installation and more and more uh, virtualized uh, social networking and this um, like this, um, this meta universe or something like that. And also the, the keep, the keep uh, uprising mental sickness, such as uh, the disorder of uh, uh, emotion, the disorderness, uh, such as anxiety and depression, something like this. So here I'm also going uh, to refer some uh, very official data published by the, by the government uh, of China. This is a survey from the mental health, uh, mental health survey. Uh, from Chinese government. So we can see during the year 2020, there, there is a survey with about, uh, about 14,500 participants uh, to make the questionnaire. And then among the population, uh, the percentage of sample that have suffered psychological shock uh, has been more than 33%. So, and also among this po uh, population, the people with uh, obvious uh, anxiety disorder with these symptoms has occupied more than 44%. And also the proportion of the people with depression symptom uh, is even more than a half. So which is 53.5% as shown on the, on the diagram on the left. So this is another survey from the China Health Yearbook in, in, in 2020. And as we can see, uh, the people we in, in China in China we have a word called ya jian kang so in translation which is uh, sub healthness so this is specially uh, medical words to describe the the population which uh, who have uh, quite stable and healthy physical condition but mentally uh, with some uh, with some disordered symptoms such as anxiety depression or something like this so the number in in 2016 is five, 555 million. And then in the year 2020, the number rise up to 567 million. And it was expected to, to be getting close to about 6 million uh, by this, uh, by this uh, estimation from experts. So we can see that uh, with this more and more uh, living style changing and this kind of uh, homing activities, uh, the health issue is becoming a top priority for the government and also for the for the professional uh, for the professional expert to figure out some new solution for that. So in China, uh, there is a newly published uh, we call the 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 four teams five year plan for the vision uh, two thousand thirty five. So uh, so in this policy, the health community has become a top priority national policy to to start to to create a more healthy living environment for, for the citizens to, to, to change this kind of uh, negative transition uh, of so many, uh, so many population in this sub-healthiness state. And also in the year 2020, uh, China has also published uh, the health community evaluation guidelines. So this is actually a very a quite official guideline book for for designer or planners to to apply for 
improve the quality uh, for the living environment in, in China. And also Shanghai is one of the most fast reacted city in China because uh, in Shanghai even published this book before, uh, before this before this policy in 2016, Shanghai has uh, published uh, 15 minutes life circle uh, to enhance this uh, health condition and also the well-being condition uh, uh, for the for the citizens. Especially, we can see the diagram from the from the right side. Uh, in this guideline, uh, this um, some key words, for example, uh, better air, uh, cleaner water, and more comfortableness. Fitness policy, uh, fitness uh, uh, facilities, uh, more humanity for the psychological careness, and especially the the yellow point, uh, which is mentioned as the innovation for the health enhancement in the in the space design has been so much connected to to the to the new trans, uh, transmission for the social function of uh, of the public space in the city. So here uh, in the in the last part of my presentation today, I'm also going to spend like a few minutes to give a short introduction about under this um, background, uh, some research of our team about this, um, how to rethink and also to reconsider the public space as a kind of uh, healing place for people to getting kind of psychological recovery uh, from their normal social state. And this, uh, this research has been conducted in, in Suzhou. Uh, and actually, uh, we all know that the Suzhou is a very famous garden city in, 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 in China. And, but a very interesting transition now is um, the government in Suzhou is opening almost half of the, the tradition gardens as a public uh, space for the, for the citizens. So for the, for the people who, who has the, we, we call the, like the living permission in, in Suzhou, all of them can enter already uh, the Suzhou garden for free uh, from the, usually from the daytime until the, the nighttime. So to some degree, the, the garden, the tradition garden, which has been designed as a totally private uh, landscape, uh, landscape art has, has switched to some kind of uh, public community area for the people. So our research is not only to how to say to observe and test whether or not there is kind of uh, behavior or psychological function when people experience the, the garden tour. And what we care more is not only like to compare these normal activities, but also we focus on some special activities which we call the privacy needs oriented, the privacy oriented activities, because this is also um, uh, also a point uh, our team has spent many years on this research topic, especially focusing on the chemistry between this kind of psychological needs uh, in the public space and what kind of chemistry can happen. And if there comes some uh, recovery or healing function from this kind of special uh, behavior manner. So we can see the, the progress. Uh, we don't have too much time to expand this topic today. So I just uh, introduce very briefly, like the privacy is and concerning to some specific uh, situational states such as solitude, insulation. And this insulation doesn't mean extreme separating. It's only some psychological level in, in, the, in the cognition level. And also concerning to some special behavior manners such as uh, contemplation, catharsis, confiding, autonomy or something like that. And also privacy activities, some sensitive behavior manner which need a specific uh, setting of uh, space design in order for these kind of activities to to happen to be able to happen so our research is to invite um, some participants to just join the garden tour for free but uh, they are they are pre-designed to spend about like one hour in the garden and they will spend half of their time uh, for just very normal leisure activities, for example, like just sitting, watch a run, uh, and also drink tea or something. And then the rest half of the time, uh, they, they are required to search for some uh, privacy uh, options, which we have designed on a, on a, on a basket to, to find a location they like to, to just enjoy the activities in the garden. So also we, 
we equipment uh, we have this uh, portable sensor collectors in the in our participants in in the in the experiment to especially uh, catch some important data to to help to analyze this uh, emotional and affection change uh, from to describe if the if the person has experienced some some uh, emotional or some like this kind of uh, fluctuation in order to analyze uh, this healing function at the end. Of course, today uh, I really hope to expand, but I have to limit it my my time a little bit. So I only share the results at, at the end. It was uh, we we are not only calculating the overall performance of this um, of this biological data in comparison inside or outside the garden, and then the, we also apply very careful this professional uh, statistical analysis to prove the validity and also this. Uh, uh, this kind of statistical significance and the result turned out to be very positive that uh, the overall time shows a very strong, uh, especially emotion and mental recovery uh, in comparison between the uh, between the participants entered the garden. And what is more important mm -hmm. to, to mention here is so wait, there comes some interruption again. Oh, still okay. Not, yes. Not completely. Okay. I think the same Okay. Yes, I also I also hear some disturbance from from your side. So maybe it's the yes. The, the okay. Should I continue or will you try again like this? Uh, try again, please. Okay. Okay. So I will just uh, go out and we will come in. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. What I find yeah, interesting here, maybe I can, yeah. I, I can bridge the, uh, the gap, is um, Thomas, Thomas Butcher, I uh, know you can't hear me, right? Can you hear me, Thomas? Yeah. I can hear you, yes. If, if uh, I find this um, approach fascinating that they try in China or in the city of Guilin or others, to evolve more classical Chinese gardens to, to, to make the people become more public spaces for contemplation. But I immediately think I love these classical Chinese garden. I've, I've went to the Wang Shuyan, is it right, Hongmeng, Wang Shuyan? The, the garden of the net master. <laughs> what is that called? I didn't, I didn't get it. You mean the garden from Suzhou or somewhere else? In Suzhou, it's Wang Shuyan, right? Or Wang Fuyan? The garden of Wang Shuyan, yes. Wang Shuyan, right? Okay. Um, and if, if, if this is competing with space, I mean, a classical Chinese garden is competing with the public space where you can build high race office buildings or so that can't work or can it if the Chinese government, local government is saying, okay, I provide space for this garden to make the people become, have space for their contemplation and things like that. I mean, I know this little, this garden is small. It's very, it's a small garden. And if they open it up, okay, or you pay a few yuan to enter, it's fine, but can this work or is there more classical Chinese gardens in the development plan of the city to be built. Uh, I, I just was asking um, Han Xin, Thomas Fritsch, if he can imagine that this public space that you have is limited. And if you, the government has the choice to build high race office buildings and earn a lot of money, but instead yeah. invest it into a classical Chinese garden for people to become more like having you know, space for contemplation and things like that. Is it yeah. really working or not? I'm, exactly. I'm not a planner, so I don't know anything about these politics behind, but it would be nice to have it, but is it only theory or is it possible in, in practical terms as well? Um, it's a big, big question and um... I think so the biggest problem is uh, um, that, uh, how to say, there's a lack of public space, space in all these new developments or in these developments that have uh, happened since China uh, started to grow and, and develop very well. 
And uh, it is still continuing in the same way that it used to be for many years. Um, I don't know if it's necessary to build Chinese gardens or to build uh, public spaces more orientated on, on the European model of cities, but definitely uh, the space in between, the space in between the buildings developments and so uh, is not something that has been taken care of very well. And my experience, I, I draw mostly from Shanghai and compared to other cities, Shanghai is already very good. So I think it's a political problem. It's a problem of how cities earn money by selling land and what they allow developers to do on this land and so on. And uh, of course, it would be nice if we could combine this more, if we would make all the communities, um, how to say, open. We have too many guarded communities, too many uh, um, compounds that you can't even go through. They have quite nice gardens. I see a lot right now from my window, but I cannot go to them because I don't live in this area. I live only in my area. It's a political problem, I would say. Yeah, thank you for your answer. Maybe Liu Hanxin can later uh, give some answers about this. I mean, if it's in the fifth, uh, 14th uh, five-year plan, written already, I think there is an obligation for the planners to, um, yeah, to, to, yeah, to have this in mind, what, what, um, what is written down there. Okay, please go on. Maybe we can okay. Hear now better. Okay, thanks. Yes, I, I think I will try to add something later after the present, after the presentation, because this is really important to these issues. I will just finish the, the last uh, few slides. So just now we, we mentioned like uh, we, we are not only comparing the, this overall performance of this experience time in the garden compared to outside of the garden, where we are also carefully collecting the, the key data in the, and then this um, questionnaire is course for the participants to compare the differences, especially on this healing function uh, between this privacy oriented activity and the normal activity, which has been shown in this diagram, like the light green, uh, the light green is, a, is about this uh, non-privacy, like this normal leisure activity. And then the green colon shows the privacy-oriented activities. We can see uh, the negative, uh, the negative uh, criteria and the positive criteria has been marked uh, with color. So we can see in this criteria, uh, it was the result tend to be very positive and very, uh, how to say, very encouraging to show that the, the privacy needs is a very typical uh, catalyst, uh, catalyst in, the, in the space. I don't say public space right now, but at least in garden, it was proved that this kind of activity has been proved with a, a higher, a much higher and more intensive recovering function uh, for, the, for the, in the emotion and, and the, especially in the emotion and, and cognition and, and this level. So here we uh, by this a uh, small instruction for this case. This bring us also including the the question. Uh, mm, has referred like uh, whether this can become uh, uh, how to say applicable or policies. Uh, we are not very sure, but at least this is um, a new how to say a new perspective to uh, uh, to think about this combination of this uh, of this very. Uh, the, uh, ther very therapy, very therapy function oriented space with combination with special, we call behavior target design. And this kind of direction shows a very great, a very good potential for the future uh, design, urban designer or architect to, to use this uh, small space design as a tool to uh, to to help enhance this uh, really resilient resilient function of public space. So of course, when we go back to the topic, and also especially for this developing model, which uh, also Thomas has has mentioned above, like this has uh, very much connected uh, to the uh, to the goal of the government for the economy development, wherever for the real estate development. But this uh, it already come it already come to the times there need to be an urgent uh, transformation. I will call maybe it's a, a, 
uh, evaluation uh, from this uh, old type of uh, public space um, model, which is focusing on this one-way display and especially on the commercial and assimilated function to a much more, much smaller, more nature and more dispersed uh, spatial structure and also in the function side uh, uh, much more caring about the real well-being uh, in the for example in the micro uh, climate level also a more intimate especially this uh, physical intimate relationship between uh, citizens and, and the nature and also between different city groups also and also the last but not the least uh, the new uprising healing and recovery function for this kind of space so at the at the end this is at the end at last I would try to give a small summary which uh, uh, I, I I put down in in three point. Uh, first, I think the the climate change uh, is not only a, a Chinese issue. I think it already became a really global issue, especially for this highly urbanized and and this highly density city area. And also the the vulnerability and the resilience of public space. Uh, should should be think and consider more from a social perspective, and also the third uh, is like the the health healing function, especially in the psychological cognition and and this self recovering uh, point uh, should be considered as a new coming core quality uh, for the for the future design for a resilient public public space. Yes, that's all and. And thanks to everyone. I think my time uh, already the time is used up. And then I will I will leave the time to to all the audience and welcome for any feedback and questions. Thanks. Thanks again. Yeah.